Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. You're looking at just a few of the hundreds of law enforcement officers from around the country in Fargo today. They are showing support for the Fargo Police Department and fallen officer Jason Mosier. Thousands of people are turning out to honor Fargo police officer Jason Mosier killed while responding to a call in North Fargo a week and a half ago. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric is stationed outside the Shields Arena where the funeral service will begin in just under an hour. In Bradford, it's been a busy morning so far. What can you tell us? That's right, Christine. Um, it began bright and early as law enforcement gathered up at the Fargo Dome on the north end of town. And the idea behind it was to travel in a group to Shields Arena. And when the motorcade started rolling, what a sight it was. Four miles down, down the, the street, all you could see was just a sea of red and blue flashing lights. Here at Shields Arena, a large flag has been suspended between two ladder trucks from area fire departments and people continue to stream in military, law enforcement and civilian all coming to show their support and pay their respects. There was even a group of Royal Canadian Mounted Police marching in step into Shields Arena here. There have been charter buses unloading right outside the doors. And uh, as I said, people just continue to, uh, to show up here. We just heard a little bit ago from Fargo Police Chief David Todd, and he just said thank you. Thank you to the other law enforcement agencies for coming out to show their support to the Fargo Police Department in their time of need. Thank you to the public for your support with the blue light bulbs and the food and the donations made to the Mosier family. And again, in a little less than an hour, the funeral ceremony will kick off here at Shields Arena. Reporting live, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Thanks, Bradford. And we are getting our first glimpse inside Shields Arena ahead of Officer Jason Mosier's funeral. You can see officers standing guard next to Mosier's casket and a very large presence of law enforcement inside and outside of the arena. We have more pictures available on valleynewslive.com. Just click on the story. An officer from each state, even Canada, are expected at Officer Mosier's funeral, saying they don't want the Fargo Police Department to feel alone. Hundreds of squad cars with flashing lights rolled through the Fargo Dome this morning. Men and women from St. Paul, Monoman County, Cedar Rapids, Billings, Montana. One passerby stopped, stared, and said, that's just incredible. We spoke with one detective who drove almost 800 miles from Goshen, Indiana. When you see the procession, it almost makes you want to cry because of the joy and the support that you see in the procession because there's all these police officers that came from everywhere um, and just knowing that you have that support from people like that. It makes you feel like you're not alone. Without a doubt. Alone isn't one of the feelings that you feel. You won't feel that today. Cass County Sheriff's deputies and West Fargo police will be taking over patrols for 24 hours in Fargo today so every Fargo police employee can attend the funeral of Officer Jason Mosier. Officials want to remind people of various delays associated with the funeral and the procession that immediately follows the service at Shields Arena that begins at 1 this afternoon. Police have closed 32nd Avenue South from 45th Street to Veterans Boulevard until about 4 o'clock to accommodate traffic and parking for the funeral. They also say drivers should expect delays around the funeral procession route, which covers about 21 miles through West Fargo, Moorhead, and Fargo. Schools in West Fargo and Moorhead are likely to be impacted, and district officials say they will notify parents about plans to cut delays as much as possible. The weather is also adding to traffic delays today. We have heard of several accidents around the area. Let's go ahead and check in real quick with meteorologist Robert Hahn to get our weather update. Yeah, snow this morning did leave some slick spots out there that it caused a few crashes. However, things are rapidly improving across the region as uh, not only has the snow ended for the most part, but temperatures continue to warm, ranging from the mid-20s off towards the east to the mid-30s off towards the west. A bit of a breeze out there. So if you are headed out and about, you will have to bundle on up as you uh, will continue to see those breezes throughout the day today. Wind chills as cold as 11 in Bedette, 14 in Bemidji, 17 
here into the Fargo Moorhead area. Partly to mostly cloudy skies, a bit of clearing off to our west, and we will see a little bit of sunshine make its way into parts of the region as we head through the day today. And the snow, as I mentioned, for the most part, has pushed well east of the area. A little bit more light snow possible for parts of the area later on tonight and early tomorrow morning. We do have temperatures warming into the mid-30s today, low 30s as we head through your Tuesday. More on your forecast, including a look at the rest of the next seven days, coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Robert. And just as a reminder, you can stay up to date on the latest conditions anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just go ahead and download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. Former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty is endorsing Marco Rubio for president. Pawlenty, who ran for president in the last election, made the announcement on CNN's New Day. I'm announcing this morning and first on your show that I'm going to endorse Marco Rubio for president. And Allison, I think it comes down to this. He's strong. He's also informed. He's conservative and he's electable and he can unite the party. And you can't ask for much more than that. I think he's got the total package and I think he's going to bring forward the strongest voice, the strongest image and really the, the most thoughtful and informed strong view about how to move this country forward from a conservative perspective. The endorsement comes days after Rubio galvanized supporters by placing second behind Donald Trump in the South Carolina primary. Apple's CEO emailed his staff today thanking them for their support. Tim Cook is referring to the case involving the iPhone of terrorist Syed Farouk. Farouk and his wife shot and killed 14 people last December in San Bernardino. The FBI is demanding Apple help break into Farouk's phone. Cook is refusing. The CEO emailed his staff saying this case is about more than just a single phone. He goes on to say it does not feel right to be on the opposite side of the government in a case centering on the freedoms and liberties that government is meant to protect. The FBI's director said Sunday the agency's demand is about giving the victims justice and providing a thorough investigation into the shooting. Apple has until Friday to respond to the court order. Stay with us. We will be back with much more.